Hello, hello. Travel with Eva here with Jordan Travel Enterprise. And today I am going to, I'm getting you ready to travel again. And I have a special guest. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Kira. Hello. And Kira is really a special guest because she's my niece. She's also a medical professional and um, we, I want to take a moment to thank all the medical professionals out there who have helped during this time. So, but we are getting you ready to travel um, right now you, to fly on, on, a, on an airplane, internationally or domestic, you have to wear a mask. So um, Kira is going to be sharing with us some tips on the do's and don'ts of mask wearing. So take it away, Kira. All right. So as my aunt said, I am a medical professional. I am actually a scribe in the ER. So what I do is all the documentation and charting for each patient that comes in. I go into the room with the doctor. I chart everything from the patient's history to the interventions, medications, procedures that are being done in the ER. So it was very important for me from the beginning to learn how to properly wear a mask in order to protect myself. Okay. So first we are going to talk about hand washing. It is critical to be hand washing first and foremost because you can be wearing a mask all day and it will not be beneficial if your hands are dirty. You're just contaminating yourself, the mask, and the people around you. Now we will jump. Before oh. we move forward with that, I heard that it's um, really good to sing happy birthday. Yes. So you know how long to wash your hands. Right. Because sometimes, you know, we go in and then we're like one soap, one, two, three, or we have children and, and they come out of the, ba the bathroom and they, you ask, did you wash your hands? So singing happy birthday and singing it all the way through, getting in between and rubbing vigorously does the trick. So I just wanted to share that little tip with you if yes. you didn't know it already. Yep. All right. So, so we will dive into how to properly wear your mask. Okay. She's going to show us how and I'm going to follow along. These strings are there for a purpose. You want to avoid touching your front of your mask as much as possible. So what you want to do is use the strings to apply the mask, put it over one ear, okay. then the next. Now we're going to position it to our faces. Use that wiring at the top and pinch it to the bridge of your nose. You want to make sure you're pinching so that you are covering that nose tightly. Then what you want to do is pull down the mask to your chin, just like that. And this is covering everything, making sure that, you know, your face is covered. You don't want to have any parts really exposed from your mouth, from your nose down. Now we're going to talk about taking off the mask. What you want to do is use the strings once again. And one by one, remove it from your ears. And you want to dispose of it in the trash can. Now, like I said, make sure that you are hand sanitizing before and after doing this because you were just wearing a mask in all these locations. So don't forget about that. Next, we're gonna talk about the don'ts. I know that you guys have all seen people out wearing it in proper ways or wondering if that's the way to do it. So we will get into that now. First way that I've seen people doing it is not pinching their nose. They have the mask on, no pinch of the nose, and it's just covering their mouth. They're not pulling it down to the chin. This is exposing a lot. You know, you're not really covering your nose, you're just covering your mouth. Things and bacteria enter through your nose and your mouth, so you need to make sure that both of those are covered. Another way I've seen people wear is not even wearing the mask at all. They're walking around holding it up to their mouth. I know that it's going to be hot in some areas that you're traveling and it just gets uncomfortable, but by doing this, it's just no benefit to it at all. And then the final way is when we see people just hanging it on their ear, like so. This is just completely a waste of time and a waste of a mask. You're not going to get any benefits out of doing this. And then sometimes I've seen, even like we were watching the news and someone has a mask on and they're talking and oops, 
as they're talking, the mask comes down. Right. So what should they do in that case? Right. Naturally, your mask is going to be moving okay. around okay. when you're talking and everything. So you want to make sure that you're always adjusting your mask when it falls, when it shifts. Pinch your nose once again and pull it down to your chin. Another thing I want to add is this may take a little time to research and find to be able to buy, but you want to make sure that you are buying masks that fit your kids. I have these little Disney characters that I was able to find, very cute. You cannot be putting a adult mask on a child. It's just not going to work for them. So this is important to find and you're probably going to have to apply it for them to ensure that they have it on correctly as well. And it's got cute little Mickey's and Minnie's <laughs> on it. Yes. So now that we properly, properly wear our mask, I want to talk about once we get into the airport. This should be secured before you get into the airport. Now we're in the airport, what do we do? Social distancing. We all know what that is by now. Uh, an easy way to achieve this is with your luggage. A luggage that you're carrying behind you makes that space um, less accessible to somebody to come into your space. So this is just a perfect way to keep that in mind that you're social distancing while you're in the airport. Once uh -huh. you get on the plane, we suggest that you have at least two pairs of gloves. Two pairs. Yes. Because once you're on the plane, what you're going to want to do is right when you get to your seat, you can use disinfectant wipes. If you don't have disinfectant wipes, make sure you have that sanitizer with you. And you, of course, you can't take a big one like this, but they do have the little uh, less than three ounce size. Right. And if you don't have wipes, you want to spend the money on wipes. Or if you just say, oh my gosh, I forgot it. You can use a tissue or paper towel that you can take right. from the bathroom. Use the sanitizer and clean your area clean your area remember there was somebody in that seat before you got there so you want to wipe down the seat wipe down the buckle wipe down the tray in front of you oh you know what can now that i have a glove on yes. there is even a way to take your gloves off yes can you believe it so let me Give me, tell me how to take my gloves off. I, I wipe my seat down. I right. got that, especially get that belt buckle because that's yes. where someone's, you know, really using. There's and, a lot of contact. Right, right. So I've cleaned everything. I'm done. What do I need to right. do? Now you want to make sure that you take one hand, you place your index finger beneath the opening of one glove, pulling it forward, inside out. Right. And, and now what now do I do with the other hand? You're going to take the index finger of this hand, pulling it forward once again. Do From the, the back? The other glove. Yeah. And that way, this glove is creating a type of baggie over both gloves so you're not touching the outside. Then we're disposing of it once again. So that was an important thing that my aunt pointed out because a lot of people just grab them off any which way and now you're just getting the germs back, back on your, on your hands. skin. Then we want to hand sanitize again. And like we said, you brought that extra pair of gloves so that for later, you still have an extra pair left. Also, I want to point out that you should want to bring first aid supplies with you and any extra medications on your carry-on. Do not leave them in your luggage that will be in the undercarriage because you will not be able to get to them. You want them to be easily accessible in this time. You never know what could happen. So you want to make sure you have all your medications with you. And one mistake that I made is I had my essentials. It was medication and, and some expensive items like a camera and different things. I had it in my carry-on because I was like, I'm not checking it. And then when I got to board the plane, the uh, all the overhead bins were full. So they said, well, we need to check your luggage. So I, at that point, you're kind of holding up the line and remembering to take out those things. So th those important items, put it in your purse. If you're a guy and you're using a backpack, put it in your backpack so that you don't have to, at the last minute, struggle like I did. Right. And lastly, I would like to point out that we recently had family traveling and they informed us that on their flight, 
there were no food or snacks provided. So depending on where you're flying to, this may be the case for you. So just a little tip, make sure that you bring your own snacks and drinks on your flight. And of course, you have to buy your drinks after you go through security. Yes. Or another a, a good tip is to take an empty water bottle with you. Um, and when you get on the other side, you can fill it up with water or you know, you or you on the other side, you purchase something and then you have something. And it's very, very important to hydrate, to drink water, drink yes. water. Don't get parched. And they're not gonna be, uh, in this particular flight that our family traveled on, they didn't have, they, they didn't not only not have snacks, but they didn't offer anything to drink. So make sure right. you hydrate. Yes. And now we're going to jump into the different masks. We know that not everybody has access or can find the proper uh, medical masks that are used in the hospital. So there are different masks that you can use that are also effective. Now this is a mask that I purchased on Amazon and it's pretty comfortable. And I just, it just uh, has Velcro around the back and it actually has space in there so that you can, um, it, you just feel like you have more space to breathe. And the other option um, is using a scarf. Right. Now, if I use a scarf, what, what, what do I need to keep in mind? You need to keep in mind that that is not the same um, effectiveness as this mask. So if you are going to uh, repeatedly use it, you're gonna wanna make sure to wash it once a day. These, they, uh, you know, are throwaways and you usually have another, you know, a pack where you can just bring out another one. With a cloth mask, you're wearing it every day and it won't be effective if it's not clean. So make sure to wash those once a day. Okay. And my last tip or my last point would just be when you're home, surgical masks are not needed. You don't need to be walking around your home uh, with the mask on, everything in your house you've already been exposed to for a lengthy amount of time. So there, you free from the mask. All right. So I hope that uh, this uh, brief time together that you've learned some tips, some do things to do and things not to do in terms of a mask. And then now when you're in the store or you're at some place and someone has a mask on and they don't have it on properly, you know, mm -mm, that's not the way. Kira showed me how I'm supposed <laughs> to wear a mask. And when you are traveling now, I, we highly recommend travel insurance. And I'll have a link in the description for um, one of the, the travel companies that we use. And also, did you know that when you travel, a lot of times the insurance that you have at home doesn't apply if you're traveling internationally. That is very true. true. We see that all the time. Orlando is a tourist area and people do not realize that their insurance does not work here. Okay. So uh, I'll also share a link in the comments for um, travel medical insurance when you travel. And you might think, well, you know, I don't need travel insurance and things like that, but things things happen and you you want to protect yourself you want to be protecting your family and also in an emergency situation you want to get back home you you that insurance is going to help you and it and when you're in a foreign country and you don't quite know oh I'm you know what hospital or what should I do you have you can um pick up your phone there is a text there's text or a phone uh, that you can call them and say, you know, this is the situation and what should I do? And they can direct you to the, the proper hospital to go to. They can help you with your um, travel arrangements should you have to travel back home. There's just so much. So I, I encourage you to really look at having um, travel protection. And also make sure you read the fine print because now um, as a result of COVID and COVID-19, some companies have exclusions. So we just, I just want you to be an aware traveler. So thank you so much for um, tra uh, joining us for this, how to wear a mask. And I have, Travel with Eva is my blog, travelwitheva.com. And on my blog, 
Uh, if you want to know more about even just using the scarf and the to do's and the don'ts, uh, check out the blog. It's travelwitheva.com. And my latest blog is on um, the why do you want to wear a scarf and how do you use it and all of those things. So take care. God bless. Um, and I always like to end my uh, broadcast or my um, YouTube presentations by saying have a blessed day and take time to be a blessing for to someone else bye for now bye bye bye